Hi everyone, it's Niall from windowsnoob.com and today we're going to take a quick look at updating Configuration Manager 2303 to Update 2309, which was announced uh, a couple of days ago. And if you saw my last video on YouTube, you saw that I was fixing the PKI infrastructure prior to doing this upgrade. So anyway, uh, I fixed it and I'm ready for the upgrade now. And, um, and we can take a look at some of the new things that are pointed out here. The uh, site infrastructure needs a new SQL ODBC driver. And that's a hard stop. You've got to um, install that before um, upgrading to 2309. Uh, there's some new features, scheduled scripts, execution time. Let's see what else. Run details from an Azure Logic application. There's a new site maintenance task, some uh, update orchestrator service for Windows 11 22H2, and some more stuff, including this um, uh, preferred management points for PXC requests and uh, enabling BitLock through a uh, provision task sequence. And funnily enough, some of those features were first came out in technical preview 2305, which is a good reason why you should use the technical previews so that you can see those updates before they make it into production. So I blogged about that back in the day and here you can see my version of the same thing, uh, including some additional information. And then some of the later stuff that they refer to down here, such as uh, the Windows 11 upgrade readiness dashboard, um, that uh, first showed its face back in technical preview 2307. And I think I even, Mentioned that here, possibly. Uh, yes, I did. And there's a couple of screenshots. So, um, point being, uh, if you're interested in Config Manager and you use it in your environment, look at the technical preview releases because stuff that starts there or shows up there uh, will more than likely show up in a uh, production release or current branch release of Config Manager. <clears throat> so, now that we know that there is a new version available, Let's get installing it. Okay, so as this was just released, uh, it's still in the early update ring and you're gonna need to run a PowerShell script to basically get it, the update to show up in your console. But before we do that, I just wanted to point out a few things. Make sure that your site is healthy before you even start uh, an upgrade, before you even attempt an upgrade. Um, Look at your component status, verify that everything is clear without errors. There was some warning there. It's related to uh, some failure that I have yet to fi fix. <laughs> this one here, Microsoft SQL Server reported SQL, SQL message 535. And this one goes back uh, quite a long way in uh, SCCM, f at, at least as far as I know. And it was supposed to be fixed with some patch, uh, which clearly this one should have, but uh, according to this, it doesn't. But anyway, we're not going to focus on that right now because it works just fine without it. One other thing that I should mention is you should test uh, things like PXE boot uh, if you're using OSD before you upgrade and verify that um, your SMS PXE log is looking good, right? And mine is. You can ignore those two little warnings, which were in red. The only reason they're, they're warnings in red is because the word failure is there and that highlights it in red. In red. So um, they're okay, we can ignore them. Um, SSL works perfectly uh, for this boot image. So. Um, let's get started, right? So we're going to get this uh, uh, opt-in script. Open that folder. And there it is. All right. So if we run that, it should extract the, uh, the script itself. And it has extracted it somewhere. I guess it has extracted it in here. <clears throat> yeah, it would be 
Where is it? That one. Okay. So let's uh, navigate to that folder and execute that script. I've also checked for updates, updated this server and restarted it before we even start this, and you should do the same. Okay, so this is the one we want to run, and let's get to it. Start PowerShell first. Uh, set execution policy. Come on. Enable. Come on. There we go. All right. And it wants to know the site server. It's this one. And off it goes. Boom. And if we go to administration, updates and servicing, what you will see there is um, configuration manager 2303 and whatever hot fixes available or hot fixes. Um, I have not installed this one, you don't need to. It will be included or it should be included in um, um, later releases, should be. So if I was to now refresh, you should see the same. Oh, there it is, available to download, just like that, really quick. Okay, so let's uh, download that. Or I'll start the download and then I'll return to this video. Um, I'll continue with this video once we have it. All right, I'm gonna stop it now. Okay, so now it's downloaded. And what I'm gonna do actually now is uninstall the ADK because it's really old on this old lab and uh, install a newer ADK after we reboot the server. So let's go ahead and do that. And I've already downloaded the um, ADK setup for a new ADK, but let's also download the ODBC driver. <clears throat> okay, so uninstall is complete. Let's uh, reboot the server. Okay. All right, so um, next I'm gonna install the new ADK for Windows 11. Uh, that is to support Windows 11 22H2 and earlier. Um, we'll do that before we do the upgrade. <clears throat> so I think I've downloaded the ADK setup here. There it is. Let's run it. Don't care about that, don't care about that, don't care about that. Yeah. Okay, I'll return to this once the ADK is downloaded and installed. Okay, that's done. Let's close that. Now we also need the Windows P add-on for the Windows ADK. Let's get that. I think it would have been much easier if they included it all together like they used to in the good old days. All right, um, one thing to note about this ADK version is uh, VBS support has been removed. Uh, a bunch of people have blogged about that, how to fix it, including um, Johan Arred Mark. So check out his blog, and uh, maybe I'll include it in the description of this video. <clears throat> okay, I'll return to this in a minute. Okay, uh, the Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit for Windows Pre-Installation Environment or Windows PE add-ons is done. Let's close that. So now we've done that, um, let's 
start our upgrade, or at least let's start the prerequisites check. Because the one thing we still have to do is install the um, ODBC driver. Now, one thing about the documentation here uh, is they do talk about it. It's the first thing that's right there. They're telling you, you need to install this one. It has to be SQL Server, the ODBC driver for SQL Server 18.1.0 or later, right? Um, they also say don't install the, the previous versions of it until they call it out uh, and they don't manage it. And then they say for more information, click here. So you click here and that gets you to here. Um, and what I would really like is a link to download the actual driver that they are expecting you to install. So for more information, see here, let's click on that. And that brings you down this little rabbit hole, which gets you to here and there's no link. There's no link to actually download it. So you have to Google it. Um, even here in the what's new in version 2309, uh, it's the same thing. For more information, see this SQL ODBC driver for the site server. Click on that. Brings you back here. And there's no link, or at least I didn't see it. So I Googled it, uh, and this is the one I found. I'll include this link in the uh, description of the video. All right, so let's uh, download it, this one here. And let's install it. What was this? Uh, click an icon. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's install that. Off we go. Okay, it's done. So at this point now, we should be able to um <clears throat> run the prerequisites check this one here and that should give us an idea of whether we're in a good state or a bad state so we've already installed the sql odbc driver uh, the latest we've uh, updated winpe or the uh, windows adk and um yeah, let's see what the prereq checker tells us. So many minutes later, um, I was trying to figure out what's going on. Why is nothing happening? The logs were not changing. This one hadn't budged from uh, April earlier this year when I upgraded it to 23.03 and it still hasn't budged as you can see. And the reason why is um, uh, Windows Defender was busy scanning the entire download after it unzipped everything. So even when I clicked on show status and it said checking prereqs here, um, show status would bring me to nothing, blank. So it looked like nothing was happening, but Task Manager did show that the anti-malware service executable was running pretty high percentage. It's, it's lowered lower now. Uh, and something at least is happening. So if I click on this, we can see what's happening. So it's, uh, we already know it's downloaded the uh, update and now I guess it's replicating it to the places it needs to be. But the thing that we care about is the prerequisite check and he's all, here's all the checks it's gonna do. Um, let's see how that goes. Going to pause. Okay, it's finally finished the uh, prereq check. Took some time, and what we can see here is it completed with warning uh, or warnings. So let's scroll down through it and see what we have. Uh, we've got SQL Server native client version. Blah, blah, blah. It's just a warning, so it's not the end of the world. Performance issues, I've seen this one before as well. Also not the end of the world. This one, 
uh, requires at least .NET 4.62, but they want 4.8. Okay. And the final one is code management workload slider for resource access policies, which basically means they want us to move the workloads for code management here from configuration manager to Intune. So let's just do that. Let's get rid of at least one of those little warnings. Okay, so now that uh, everything is really ready to rock, let's go ahead and do the upgrade. And that's gonna take some time. And I'll return once it's done. And some time later, it's all done. Everything is completed, including the new console. So we can see here that the uh, con uh, console version is 2309. Uh, you can see the detailed version there. And uh, configuration manager 2309 is listed as installed. <clears throat> um, we can look at that new Windows 11 upgrade readiness dashboard. There it is. Um, remember, I did blog about this stuff before, so you can take a look at that here. It was first released in Technical Preview 2307. And what else can I say? At this point, uh, after upgrading, it would be a good idea to test out something like, um, uh, does OSD still work, for example? Remember, we... Um, we uh, upgraded the ADK, so let's have a look. And that's a good sign. Yeah, that is a very good sign. So I think uh, things have gone well. We've succeeded in upgrading the site to 2309 and OSD is still working. Um, let's have a look at the status. All looks good at the moment. Of course, that might change later on. I have to monitor these ones particularly, see if anything weird is reported. Uh, of course, a good idea would be to look at your cloud services if you've got a CMG and see how that is. Now, I did see a tweet from one of the product group members let's see do i have it here and let's see what did he say was it this one no it was this one <clears throat> configure config manager 2309 update your existing cmg web app to add more security uh, let's see go in there update application settings okay let's try that shall we so that's here and here's our web app and we just update the application settings and it says this action updates the azure ad web app with the latest configuration manager settings these settings include reading directory data and enabling an azure ad device token Do you want to continue yes okay so that's pretty much it okay i have to sign in um thanks for watching this one i'll post some links to um, some of the things I've referred to in the video, uh, in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.